day today to go over all these things. I don't know how some of you have patience for me. I'm actually really dorky. <laughs> what is going on guys? I am back with another video. And if you're new here, please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And today's video is gonna be bulky. <laughs> so last semester, I felt like a lot of people had questions about my ginormous binders and how I keep them from getting crazy and totally disorganized. I just want to start out by saying that I am by no means a pro organizer. Also, I feel like there are two types of people in this world. You're either a binder person or a computer note taker or actually no three then a notebook person. I don't get the notebook people. I can't do the notebooks. I've done the computer notes and they're not bad, but I always have to print them out and then put them in the binder. So am I really a computer person? I don't know. I think I'm more binder. So I have two binders to show you guys today from last semester. I had broken up the binders into like two different categories, one being the harder classes. So I used to keep my patho farm and my fundamentals in one binder and then all of my other classes in a different binder. But patho farm took up my entire life last semester and I had to get it its own binder. So. This is what we're working with. This binder, I have my fundamentals, my communications, psychology, and my EBP paperwork for my class that I we had to do. The binder itself is from Staples. I think this is like their signature something. Like it's specific to Staples. And this is the best binder that I have ever owned in my entire life because it doesn't break. It's virtually unstoppable. This thing is awesome um most bind the traditional classic binders that you get like at walgreens and stuff would always break on the sides because i fill these things up with tons of information so the staples binder is the only one that's been able to hold up and i love putting little cute stuff that i make on canva or from pinterest i think it makes it look cute and it eases my mind when i go to open it <laughs> I think you guys can see like that. So right here, I always keep loose leaf copy paper or lined paper, and it has this little pocket right here so that papers don't fall out everywhere when you open it. It's so convenient. And a big thing with me and binders is that I hate when the ring is in this area right here. So when you open it, then it moves around the papers and stuff, and it causes the papers to break and fall out, and then you have a mess, and then you're stressed. Also, this is a D-ring binder, which is an absolute must as well, so that papers don't break or move around and you have more space to put things. So let's get into how I organize this thing. So I have an array of dividers for different things. So this first divider here is for the class. So this one says Fundamentals of Nursing Practice, and that is the first thing that you see. The next thing is that I have this sleeve that has a tab on it and it says syllabus on it. And this is where I keep the syllabus and the course outline for the semester. Anytime I need to reference the syllabus, it is fully accessible in this section of the book. We get into the content of the binder. And so I just have a few housekeeping stuff in here that came with last semester, like course outline things. And then we get into notes. So the notes pages, I would print off of the computer. I would take them most of the time on Google Docs and then print them out. So they were easy in the binder. And what I like to do is that I like to separate them out by topic. So we're in here in this topic, I have vitals, clinical calculations, health assessment, and health assessment two and all of that good stuff. I have PowerPoints in here. And then I also have like little note pages that I have made myself throughout the semester that I will put in these sections. The sections I often do an according to exam as well. So all of this will be exam number one. So in here, I have a whole tab. If we move into exam two, we're still in fundamentals by the way. <laughs> so all of this, 
was for exam one. This is all exam two information. I have these plastic dividers from Amazon that I got and I keep loose leaf handouts in here, just the things that the professor has put on Blackboard at the time um, or classes now that I can print out and put in here that I didn't really feel like hole punching. And then we move into the different dividers for exam two and all of the PowerPoints that came with that, all of my notes that I took. I will have a separate video on how I take notes and how I do things for each class because I feel like it differs per class. Like for fundamentals, I really found it helpful to look at power, the PowerPoints and then note take anything that she said that wasn't in the PowerPoint. And that helped me so much on the tests. Moving on to psychology, I have the same system going on. I have a syllabus here and then course cri paper criteria. This was a paper that we had to write for the semester. This is the course outline for the semester as well. And then we get into the different topics for exams. I have clinical management, anxiety and depression, mood disorders, schizophrenia, all of those things. So that was all exam number one. And then we get into exam number two. I will keep some study guides in here for that class, some notes that I took, some notes that I took on simple nursing as well. I will talk about simple nursing in a different video, but simple nursing has saved me as well as registered nurse RN. She is amazing as well. I will try and link all of those channels below, but I will be talking about them in a different video about how I study. So, so same idea with the fundamentals. I have all of these different topics pertaining to whatever topic of the exam that is presented to us. For example, if they tell me, okay, exam two is gonna be on somatic disorders, anger, and OCD, I will have three sections in the binder for somatic disorders, anger, and OCD. And it makes it super easy for me to be like, okay, today I'm going to go over somatic disorders and I will learn everything I need to learn about somatic disorders. I will take practice tests on somatic disorders. I will put all of this information in here and the next day I'll go into anger. Not like real anger, like the topic anger. Fooled ya. So this sort of a system also makes it very easy in case there's something that you don't understand because then you know exactly where to find it and what section it is. And I also love to use, hold on, let me see. I love to use these little tab things. I mentioned these in what's in my backpack video to mark out things that I don't understand. Usually I'll mark it in red and I will stick it like above whatever page I need and I will go up to the professor about it or schedule a Zoom call nowadays about it. And it really helps me to keep all of the information that I do have already in my brain together and as well as things that I don't understand. I have a similar system going on with the Patho Farm Binder but essentially it is all for one class. It is separated out into exams and we had six exams for this class throughout the entire, from August to December. And I thought that that was the craziest thing ever, but at the end of the day, it helps your grade out a whole lot when you don't do well on one exam. So, which did happen to me, which is a story time for a different video, but so let's get into what's in here. So I just have like a study guide in here for this one. This is just like an ABG study guide that my friend made and I kind of added in my own notes into it. So shout out to all of the girls in my group that all share their study guides and we all kind of put in our part and it just helped us all get through it and I'm so grateful for them. I have a cheat sheet in here for antimycobacterials and as you can see, I just kind of like make it look cute this makes it easy for me to just go over information and i'll only do those if it's something that i don't really understand because then it gives me extra study time writing all of the information down and then having to memorize it later i have here a divider pocket which says printouts and handout pages i have study cards in here that are also tabbed up with information like infection medication. All of these pink cards are infection medications that I had to learn. So I have in here a page that I ripped out of my Erin Condren planner and I made it into a fall 2020 schedule for myself and I had a whole key 
of when I had lecture lab and clinical, which made it very easy as well. Then we get into the patho farm tab with the syllabus, like in the previous binder. All of the schedule of activities is in here. The different tabs with the different subjects that was that were going to be in there. These are all like some notes that were shared within the cohort as well. Essentially for notes, I did my own notes, handwritten notes, typed notes. I shared my notes with others and others shared their notes with me. And we all kind of just formulated a whole study guide to help us during exams. So this is just an example of that little things that I got in here. And then I also separate these out by exams this is an example of a study guide that you can print off of the simple nursing website so i literally strung these together with rubber bands and this is just different things like uti medications antibiotics i think this is yeah macro lids different um infection control medications that we were learning for exam two so i having all of this information organized in this way also really helps with when I go to take the NCLEX because then I can really pinpoint, okay, what am I having trouble with when I'm studying for the NCLEX and where can I find it in the nose from when I went to school? For cardio, I did make all of these neat cheat sheets that really helped me during the test. These are all from Simple Nursing and from RegisterNurseRN.com. I just took them myself while I was watching their videos and it really does help. I'm super proud of this heart that I drew. Again, I have no particular way of taking notes per exam, per test, per class. I feel like I take exams or whatever I feel. Wow, I take exams. I feel like I take notes in accordance to the information that I'm being presented. If it's easier information for me to digest, then I like doing the PowerPoints with like extra side notes. If it's something a little bit harder to understand, I draw out diagrams, I watch videos on it. I will create my own study guide on it. This is a study guide that I had made for the cardio test. So I'll write the topic and then whatever information that I need to know about that topic on the right hand side. And this really helps. This is like a Cornell type method. All right, guys, that was it for my binder tours slash binder organization video. If you guys have any questions for me, please drop a comment down below and I will try and get all to all of the questions. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.